President Trump's chief strategist, Steve Bannon, facing fire from the left. According to Politico, Democrats aim to make Steve Bannon into a scarier Karl Rove, claiming the former Breitbart news editor is the guy who's really in charge at the White House. Getting President Trump's attention, the president very clear on Twitter, though. I call my own shots. Largely based on an accumulation of data, and everyone knows it. Some fake news media, in order to marginalize, lies. But every president has had key advisors, who are sometimes held up as puppet masters. Back in 2006, President Bush insisted that he was no figurehead when he defended Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld against six retired generals calling for his resignation. I listen to all voices. But mine's the final decision. I hear the voices, and I read the front page, and I know the speculation, but I'm the decider, and I decide what is best, and what's best is for Don Rumsfeld to remain as the Secretary of Defense. As for former President Obama, critics have referred to senior advisor Valerie Jarrett as the shadow president. Carl Rove is former White House Deputy Chief of Staff to President George W. Bush, and a Fox News editor, and even scarier Carl Rove. How does that make you feel? Is, that, is it flattering? Even scarier? Well, look, the, the media get involved a bunch of myths. Um, uh, back when I was the uh, senior advisor to President Bush, uh, I had a biography written by two le Texas left-wing journalists entitled Bush's Brain. And look, President Bush knew exactly what that was all about. That was about using me to attack him. And many of these attacks on Bannon ha have to do with attacking Trump. So uh, this is what uh, the press sometimes does, and particularly when the Democrats uh, announce that that's their strategy. So, I mean, I can't imagine a, w a more uh, worthless thing to do than for Democrats to say, we're going to come out and, and attack Bannon in order to make uh, him a scarier Karl mm -hmm. Rove and undermine Trump. I mean, uh, telegraph what you're doing and... Uh, you know, it, it, fine, go off and, and, and do that, On but that ain't hand, gonna get to the center of the issue. It, it can work to a president's advantage. I mean, it's somebody to be the bad sure. guy, to take the heat, to be the object of yeah. hate. In a lot of ways, it's pretty smart because right now, Democrats are very focused on Bannon and what an awful person they think he is. I mean, they love to talk yeah. about that. So it can be good in that sense, right? Well, yeah, I'm smiling because when, when there'd be some particularly nasty piece, Bush would laugh and say, better you than me. Yeah. And uh, that's right. It's, uh, it's Sometimes it's better for, for the people around the president to take the arrows. But let's not kid ourselves. This is an effort to diminish the president by diminishing the people around him. And uh, most of the time uh, it fails unless there's something fundamentally flawed in that individual. You know, Bobby Baker, uh, who had a liaison in a men's room near the White House. I, I'm sorry, not Bobby Baker. Bobby Baker, who had, who had been involved in a bunch of shady dealings. And uh, another aide to the president who was found, to Lyndon Johnson, was found having an assignation in a, in a men's room near the White House. These kind of things got, uh, it, it tarnished President mm -hmm. uh, uh, Johnson because they were people whom he knew and people whom he was associated with who'd done something that wasn't political and was outside the norms. In some ways, though, it seems like that this may be a tactic of this president in particular to put something out there to be the object of attack while he's maybe off doing something else. Not just Steve Bannon, but also the idea that we seem to sort of have the nonsense issue of the day, the dog chasing their tail in the media. I mean, today we're talking about, um, you know, this issue of underreported ta uh, terror attacks. Before that, we're talking about crowd size. You know, it seems like maybe in the same vein, he sets something up as the left goes crazy over it, the media goes crazy over it, and his folks say, what are you, you guys are all insane. What are you talking about? Is that a possible strategy in your mind? Well, it is, uh, but A, you gotta be careful not to overuse it, and B, you gotta be careful that it doesn't boomerang on you. I frankly think the crowd size argument, while it did divert attention from other things, I think like it would have been better march. to have the... Well, it would have been better to have the attention on some of the other things he was doing, like the Obamacare executive order, which was issued on Friday and buried underneath all of this stuff. So uh, it also, if you do this too much and, you're, and you go over the top, uh, it tends to undermine the credibility of the president and not necessarily the, the credibility of his opponents. So you've yeah. got to be careful about doing it. I grant you that it's sometimes done. I think, it's, uh, I think we pay too much attention to okay. how often it's done. This administration is doing it far more often than other administrations That's may have sure. done. That's for sure. Carl Rove, always great to see you. Thank you, sir. Anytime so you want a scary guy on. <laughs>